Hey guys, today's topic is carrier aggregation, which is one of the most fundamental techniques used by 4G LTE networks as well as 5G NR networks. Carrier aggregation is a technique used by LTE and 5G NR networks to combine multiple carriers or channels into one so that your mobile phone can get a much bigger channel overall to give you higher bandwidths. So the principle behind carrier aggregation is that you combine multiple channels into one to make a much bigger overall channel or carrier than using an individual carrier. For example, if this phone is connected to a 20 MHz channel, then it'll get a certain data rate. But if it gets connected to two 20 MHz channels, which means 40 MHz channel, then of course it's going to get much higher data rates. So the basic concept is to combine or aggregate multiple frequency carriers into one to have a much bigger overall carrier. Carrier aggregation offers flexibility to a mobile network operator by allowing them to utilize the existing frequency carriers better. It allows the operators to combine multiple frequency carriers or RF carriers into one to serve user devices. Four G LTE networks use flexible bandwidths. So basically, what they do is that they use channels of one point four megahertz, three megahertz, five megahertz, ten megahertz, fifteen megahertz, and twenty megahertz. So basically, multiple sizes of channel bandwidths. So the value that carrier aggregation adds is that it allows them to use some of these channels and even multiples of these channels and combine them into one. Carrier aggregation was not part of the original launch of LTE networks and it was only introduced or added to LTE networks when they launched LTE Advanced. Both LTE Advanced and LTE Advanced Pro use carrier aggregation. So if you look at this table on the screen, you will see that the original LTE networks did not have any carrier aggregation. LTE Advanced networks support carrier aggregation of up to five carriers, which basically means that if you were to use a 20 MHz channel, then 20 times 5 is 100, so you can have a maximum bandwidth of 100 MHz in LTE Advanced. LTE Advanced Pro networks take carrier aggregation to another level. So as you can see in the table, they can use up to 32 carriers. That basically means that if you were to use 20 MHz channel, then 20 times 32 equals 640 MHz, which basically means that with carrier aggregation in LTE Advanced Pro networks, you can have a maximum bandwidth of 640 megahertz. Now that is one gigantic channel. It's also important to know that the LTE networks can be deployed as FDD as well as TDD. FDD is frequency division duplex and TDD is time division duplex. And carrier aggregation can be applied to both FDD and TDD deployment models. Okay, now let's have a look at some of the scenarios or types of carrier aggregation in 4G LTE networks. There are three carrier aggregation scenarios or types defined by 3GPP. Intraband contiguous that uses adjacent RF carriers within a single frequency band. Intraband non-contiguous that uses non-adjacent carriers within a single band. And interband non-contiguous that uses carriers across separate frequency bands. 4G LTE networks use a range of different frequency bands. So an intraband contiguous carrier aggregation is basically when both of the carriers or channels for carrier aggregation are adjacent to each other, which means they're right next to each other or contiguous to each other. You can also have intraband non-contiguous carrier aggregation, which basically means that you're using the same frequency band, but the channels or carriers are not right next to each other, but they are separated from each other. And finally, the third type is interband non-contiguous carrier aggregation. So what we do in this one is that we're using two separate frequency bands and the carriers are in these two separate frequency bands, which means that they're not right next to each other and hence they're not contiguous. There's also a concept of cell categorization, which consists of primary serving cell and secondary serving cell. Each RF carrier or component carrier equates to a serving cell that can be primary or secondary. Primary serving cell is one with which the user device, UE, establishes an initial connection. Each connection has a single primary serving cell with a primary component carrier. 
The secondary serving cell provides additional radio resources and there can be multiple secondary serving cells. So a primary serving cell is the one that is primarily serving a certain mobile phone. When you add other carriers to achieve carrier aggregation, then those other carriers become secondary serving cells. Thanks for watching the video guys. I've written a detailed post on this topic. Have a look at the link in the description below.